Hi. Here's a video that I'm going to do, and maybe this is going to be better, and perhaps this is the way we can do this differently. So it's blocked today for showing a video, an advertisement of what class was going to look like today, or at least just a little picture. Elbow to hand, knee to toe, chest to chest, and maybe my head. So that got blocked. Um, there are some serious things that need to change right now. I'm doing this all on my own. I'm gonna put this on YouTube. It's probably on YouTube if you're watching it right now. I might be saving it. Here we are. What a world we live in. Um, interesting enough, I pulled a card today that said that this was the day there would be a new beginning, beginning in a way that we would do the work that we do. And I thought that was a message that I was actually supposed to convey and bring out into the world. Um, perhaps that resonates with you. Um, but maybe that was more for me. Um, I'm trying to think of the specificity of my question. But here we are. And I do have some things that I thought were new to me to bring to you. So perhaps it's for all of us. Also, the giveaway was going to be really fun pom-poms and that's why I'm wearing these. Um, so I guess it might have to wait a month, or it might wait a week, or maybe somehow, in some way, we can make this happen um, in, in, in a day. I don't know. Thanks for being here. All right, come to a tall seat, comfortable, clear, without any restriction, which might be sort of felt by being held back, or being censored, or being told what you can't do. And it's fine because we'll find a way of doing it regardless, right? That's, that's our nature. All right, so we only have this half hour to make this practice happen, and I wish and hope and I, I believe that it is still possible and we are not stuck with only one way and one place. The venues are vast, they're wide. We live in the universe and not only just in this world, right? So gather your hands with me and make this connection, whatever time, whatever day, in whatever way it is that you can connect to this practice, make it happen. Think about the energy, the power that you've cultivated, the way that you know yourself, the way you work in the world, and see yourself as always fortifying, right? Bringing yourself into the world in a way where you're not just battling, what pushes you away or blocks you, but makes you shine brighter and overcome and brings those walls down and shorter because you're higher and above and bigger. All right, so bow gently to yourself. Blessings to that. Release your hands and open your eyes. And here we go. Okay, come to your mats turning off this AC. So you get to your mat and come to down dog. Lay right, down dog. For us today, consider that maybe this is also some part of our work that we do differently. Okay? So when you're in your down dog, right, making your down dog the place that you feel that you resonate from. So like if you resonate from from a shorter space because some kind of moment in your hamstrings or your hips or your legs is going to give you pause. Take a breath there. Right? If, if length or space is what you need, right? Step your hands out. Step your feet back. Right now, take your time and just take as many steps as possible. So I'm, I'm encouraging you to use the space and use the time and let it be your own. And because this is also a recording, right? You don't have to wait for anyone. You can make pauses, you can make room, you can be quiet, you can be loud, you can be whatever you want, right? Come up to a flat back. And exhale, sit to chair pose. Okay, inhale, come up to stand, reach up to the sky, and now exhale, go halfway. All right, so when you come halfway, we're in that airplane pose, 
and just feeling that space where you're lifting your arm, but you're lifting from your shoulder, your elbow, and your wrist. Imagine that the air that's between your arm and the floor is giving you room to just kind of float up or expand, right? So giving you space. This also will feel like tone behind your shoulders, behind your upper back. And then exhale and fold. Let your head fully drop, touch the floor with your fingertips, Tep, touch your left foot back. So you go to low lunge for a moment, and then step up to warrior three with your left knee bent. So scorpion version of warrior three. Come up to stand, left knee lifts, and sit to chair. Okay, again, swim out to that flat back airplane arms, lifting shoulders to fingers, right? So start proximal to distal. Distal our fingertips, proximal is close to heart. Exhale, fold. Okay, right foot steps back. So you step back to low lunge, and you step up to warrior three with a bent right knee. Right, so it's a, I call it a scorpion leg, right? So you can call it whatever you like, it's a bent knee. Arms up. Left leg lowers you to chair. Swim out. I, I think of it as a swim, right? So you're floating out to that flat back. And then exhale and fold. So wherever your reminders can come in, I'll sort of cue that as it may happen. Um, feel free if you need to change anything, if anything feels sort of right or bright, be there for it. Woo! All right. So I'm putting a timer on to make sure this is a half hour. Inhale to a flat back. On your exhale, fingers touch, left foot steps back. All right, we know this pretty well. This is a pretty common way that I like to warm us up. Back to three-legged dog. Step the foot forward again. And then up to warrior three, left knee bend, right? Scorpion leg. Now you're gonna come up, lift the knee, lift the arms, and then hug into that shin, right? So it's a, we call this like more of a flamingo pose, right? Now that one is gonna sink into a chair pose. Sweep it out, flat back. Fold it in, forward down. Okay. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, fingers touch. Right foot steps back. Left leg goes back, three-legged dog. The left knee pulls in, place the foot. Lean forward to that left foot. Right knee bends, so you go scorpion warrior three. And up, right knee lifts. Bring your hands to your shin and hold. Hold into it, but don't hold your breath, right? Hold into the space that is concentrated and strong, and then as you very gently melt, place that chair pose, right? So it's pretty strong in the back, right? Still strong in the back for that flat back swimming arms, and then nice release, hips to shoulders to head, forward back. All right, fingers touch. We're going left foot back, low lunge, Right foot back, plank pose. Left foot forward, and right foot forward. Right, inhale through a flat back, and exhale, fold. Okay, inhale all the way up to stand. Arms reach up, and then sit to chair. Hands come down, straighten the legs. We're going right foot back, left foot back. Right foot forward, Left foot forward, inhale flat back, exhale chair, and inhale stand. Awesome, exhale fold. Pretty good. So now we're set to be kind of more relative to the tracking and putting our legs sort of in the same kind of cadence and pace. Inhale to a flat back, exhale knees bend, hands hop, reap up, hop back, plank pose. Right, so we're still unedited here, so it's gonna still seem very sort of live. <laughs> Chaturanga to the floor. Right, on your inhale, come up, so it's a cobra pose, shoulders back, and then knees stay on the floor, it's all fours. Right, tuck the toes, sink the hips back, 
right? Lift your knees and slide back to down dog. Right, in this down dog, we're very gently and softly going to start to like lower the elbows, right? But keep your chest and your eyes forward so the forearms tap to the floor, and then they pick back up and you come up to plank. Right foot steps between your hands. Right, come up, left knee bends, arms up to the sides of Scorpion Warrior Three. Up to stand, left knee lifts. Right, take that into a tree pose. Chest is up. Right hand comes down, left arm, reach over to the right. All right, so we did this the other day, and this is always gonna be a nice day to practice warrior three, because it always gives us room to sort of reposition what throws us off, right? What imbalances us actually brings us more balance. So consider like however we are sort of unfocused from sort of the way that our our expected time together comes, this might actually help refocus us, right? So talking a lot does not help going over to the left. So my left forearm is sliding out my left knee, right arm over to the right, back to center, left knee also, sit to chair. Whew, that's a lot. Sweep out, swim the arms airplane, exhale, fold into the legs. Inhale to a flat back. On your exhale, knees bend, press into the floor. Chaturanga to up dog, right? Knees to the floor, come up to all fours. So you go back, tuck the toes, and as you sink your hips back, that's when your knees lift, right? When your knees lift and your legs get straight, tap the elbows down, right? Forearms to the mat, and then when you come up, lift the shoulders forward, left foot also steps forward, it's low lunge. Right, up to warrior three. Right knee bends. And then come up to stand, right knee left. Right, right knee wide right. Right, feel free to adjust that. Awesome, first time is left arm down the left leg, right arm over to the left. Okay, so wherever your eyes find you balancing, that's appropriate. Right, come up. Ooh, <laughs> oh, there's my balance. Right hand goes to right knee, left arm goes over the ear. And consider yourself rising from the left under ribs. There are two floating ribs, right up, out, through, under shoulder, back to center, fall a little bit, that's fine. Right knee to middle and sit to chair. Maybe your chair is also becoming a little bit more sort of squatty, right? You know I love a little squatty potty. Not really, actually. I like to sit, but um, I don't like that sort of buying of extra equipment. Arms up to the side, and then fold. Fold this one closer. Fold it closer because you can, and no one should restrict you from getting closer to yourself in whatever it is that you practice, right? So here we are. Right? Uninhibited. And the more that you move within yourself, that's how you actually practice more of that freedom, right? Inhale to a flat back. On your exhale, knees bend, hands plant, pushing the floor. How do you get to chaturanga, right? Pushing the floor, send those heels back, right? The fingers actually might turn out a bit so that my biceps turn out so the chest can lift. Tops of the feet press on the floor, hips float back down dog. All right, let's get that little one again here. So we're gonna go inhale to plank pose, exhale knees to the floor. Go for a little sort of cow version, the arch to the back, lift the chin, and then you're gonna go into the cat version, tuck the chin, round the back. Tuck the toes, lift the knees, and then as you sink back to down dog, sink down into the elbows, okay? And you're gonna here, keep the elbows on the floor first, lift the right leg. So now when you lift the elbows, pull the right knee forward and place the foot. Awesome, sweep that forward. Here's your scorpion version of a, a warrior three, left arm back, right arm forward, okay? Get this nice little moment of a Natarajasana, and you come up to stand. Left knee lifts, 
place it for tree, right arm right, left arm to the right, arch a little further, more space. Okay, inhale up, left knee forward. Now it's different, you're going right hand to left foot, left arm forward, so a little different version. It's a little bit more Grace Jones version of Natarajasana. But then we go left hand down, and then right shoulder open, lift from the front or top of that left knee and thigh, and the front of that right shoulder. Okay, let go of the foot, right hand to the floor, left foot steps back, you're in the lunge. Little different here, hands plant, right leg goes up, three-legged chaturanga, go up dog, to down dog. Whew. Inhale the plank, exhale knees to the floor. Right? Inhale to the arched back, chin lift. Exhale to the round back, chin tuck. Tuck your chin, right? Lift your knees, right? land it in down dog, sink it to elbows, and lift it to left leg. Right, so lifting from the back of the heel, sinking from the heart. As the elbows come up, the left knee comes in, and place the foot, press down to the heel, pick up to warrior three with a scorpion leg. Okay, come up to stand, right knee lifts, place it, go tree, then sweep it, go left. Right, right arm over the left shoulder, whoo! So nice, come up, back to center, right knee front. It's right hand, right foot or ankle, right? So however we want to work, shin, left arm forward, right arm back. Okay, you let go, release the arms, left hand back, right arm forward. And then right hand down, lean into it, shift into that right hand, lift through that right leg, open that left shoulder. Pretty cute. Okay, so you're getting all that space. You might be sort of examining this more from the standing leg, or from the shift forward from right hip to right shoulder, or even from the right hip to the right knee. Let the foot go, step it back. You're in low lunge. Left leg goes to the sky. As you chaturanga, up dog, to down dog. Pretty good. Look forward to your hands when you're ready. Hop your feet to your hands. Inhale to a flat back. And exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up. Arms go up. And then hands come together to your heart. All right, so we've been working a pretty steady state here. Release the hands. Turn the palms to face forward. And put a little squeeze in your butt. Close your eyes too. As you notice when the eyes are closed, when you're engaging, and though like, you know, you think, okay, glutes, butt, the cue, the hips, the pelvis, right? Something that cues in that comes from there, and this is our sort of our sacred half space, right? Our, our safety zone. It's also our, our place of recreation. Makes sense. If something transforms outwardly that is, you know, unique to your own, you might be sort of noticing, okay, my legs connected, they're in the earth, even if you're on the third floor of your building, right? As your sort of beams, lasers, shine comes out from the palms, hands, right? This is Tadasana. That actually doesn't just draw out and sort of spread out from the hands, this brings you way deep into the heart where it's the source, and then it comes straight up through that, that sort of shine of the head, right? So you believe it or you don't, you feel it. Uh, if you can, if you're willing, arms go up to the sky, sit to chair. Right, come back up to stand, lift the left knee. Take your Natarajasana, or no, you're sorry, your warrior three with scorpion leg, and then leg switch, left foot steps back, right knee bends. Right leg goes back, now go open hip. Right, go open hip so much that you can turn that left heel left 
and the right feet's footsteps. You go for a beautiful, expanded version of your wild thing. Right, take a little sort of moment to tuck your left shoulder back to sit. We haven't gone for a twist, so you'll lean into that right hip, right sit bone, and turn over your right shoulder. Okay. Come back. Left hand. Right, lift the hip, pressing into the right heel, right foot up. Okay, now you're going to go right knee, tuck in towards your face, so it's a three-legged plank. And then as you go back to three-legged dog, lower the elbows. Now pick up the elbows, step the foot forward. So yes, this is the sort of third round here, up to warrior three, scorpion version. Up to stand, left knee, ride, right? Right hand down right leg, left arm over right shoulder. Okay, this is a pretty wild move, right? Come back up. And so when the left knee comes forward, you can have the choice to go closer to your knee, mid shin, ankle, or foot. So when you go into this, you reach this into Natarajasana, you can go wider and deeper into the heart. Lift those left toes towards the sky, right arm forward. Right, you're gonna take right hand down on this one and take this Ardha Chakasana, left foot, Press right. So good. Let that go. It goes half moon pose. And when the left hand comes down, you're actually stepping that left foot over to the right. All right, so you get to the sort of pinky toe side of the foot, and then right arm way up to the sky. So here's this sort of complementary twist. And it's also coming straight from those sort of deep glute spaces. Right hand to the floor, left leg goes up. Left knee tucks in. You're actually gonna sink that into your little pistol squat to sit. Both legs up, high boat. All right, that's fun. Tuck it in, go for a cannonball to a low boat. All right, not landing, but looking very much like corpse pose. Right, come back up, cannonball. Place the feet, toes touch, lift the butt. Shift into the legs, straighten the legs, and forward bow. Okay, inhale to a flat back. Your exhale, hands plant, push into the floor, chaturanga. Up dog to down dog. Pretty good. Last side, so finishing, right? Super clean, super cute. Um, look forward to your hands. Hop your feet to your hands. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale to fold. Okay, hands to touch. Right foot steps back. <laughs> Left leg goes back, three-legged dog. Okay, come forward, tuck your knee in towards your face, face to knee, and then when you go back, both elbows down, left leg straightens. Okay, you come back up with the elbows, tuck the knee, and when you go back, open the hip. Three-legged dog. Okay, right here is when we turn that right heel right and take your time, watch it, right? Stay lifted, open, left shoulder to right shoulder and over into a wild thing. Okay, so there's a nice point in that right foot. Careful placement with calm, left hip down, turn your twist over that left knee. Right leg is staying pretty straight from hip to heel. Okay, going over right shoulder, right hand to the mat, heels lift, hand to the floor, left leg up, left foot step between the hands, up to your cutie little version of your scorpion pose, up, standing, tree pose. Right, so rickshasana if you like the clinical terms. Traditional term, not clinical. Left leg, hand down that left leg, right arm over to the right. So if the right arm dominates, you'll fall over to the left. If the right leg dominates, you won't get as far as you can. Let them share 
even though they're sharing, they're moving in different spaces. Okay, come back up, right knee lift. So just like before, choosing close to the knee, a smaller back bend, meaning it's harder, right? Closer to the foot, a wider open version, right? So first we're just kind of choosing what fits where we are in our practice. Right leg back, left arm forward, and then finding left hand landing, right hip opening. Yay. Right, so Ardha Chapasana. Pretty clean, pretty clear. Right arm up. It's a half moon pose. And that half moon pose just kind of follows from that right heel long, right leg, right hand to the floor. Lower the right hip so you can cross over and step it into a little bit of that that sweet little sort of weird crossover kind of a it's kind of a modified version of a like a like a twist from the hips from the legs right when you pick that back up right leg goes up right knee tucks in to go under so that goes under so your left leg pistol squats you to sit and you rise up and you're in a high boat okay that'll soften you down into your low boat scratch Right, come up to tuck back in, shins tuck, hands tuck. And so when you get your feet into the floor, right, you can feel kind of, if you try to sit to the front of your sit bones, it'll push you into your heels, right? If you stay behind your sit bones, it makes your feet light, kind of weightless, right? So you go kind of behind your center of gravity. Leaning forward goes through the chest, goes through the shins, the feet, the knees, obviously. Press into your feet so you can use your hands up so you get safe into your feet to bring this forward into a forward bow. All right, so that weight shift, it takes some time. It's a, it's a development of some strength, some understanding. It's also kind of a, a playful way of working into some core um, stability, right? Come to a flat back. Phew, thanks for working with this. Exhale and drop, head drops. Okay, inhale to a flat back. Exhale, knees bend, hands plant. Last vinyasa, up dog, this sounds like a Lord of the Rings music. <laughs> All right, up dog to down dog, awesome. Let's hop your knees to the floor, to the pinky finger, so you're just hopping wide, toes touching, right? So you're kind of getting into the space, big toes touching, knees as wide as the mat, hips are stable, we're doing pretty good. Right arm goes up, you go over your right shoulder and go to your thigh, right hamstring. So this is an advanced version of where we've been going. So your right hand is gonna probably slide down to the back of your right knee and press forward. Tuck your right shoulder down, left arm reach. Go wide and back, straight back, left hand. Take your left hand to the back now of your left thigh and lean back into your toes. Right, press into the toes, come up. Ooh, hands touch to the floor. Tuck the toes, lift the knees. Go back, you're sitting to a chair pose for a moment. Lower the hips even further. Catch yourself, lower the butt, and then take that into the low boat, right? So protect your knees. You know, I'm sort of getting over a, a little sort of kerfuffle with the knees and sort of just making sure that everything is safe. So never push yourself to a place where you feel like you might compromise your safety. Right, low boat, arms over the head to release. Right, bend your elbows, fingers are up to the sky. Take this to fish pose. So keep the toes, heels are touching the floor, point the toes, press into the elbows, arch the back. So you go up to the top of the head, but most of this is elbows, our elbows. Right, shoulders back, now lift the legs. You could lift the arms as well, palms to touch. Right, never hurting. Releasing elbows, touch, tuck the chin, lower, right? Tuck the knees, hold, and pull them in. So you stretch the low back a little bit because we worked it a lot, so your pelvis will come off the floor, okay? Now lower the hips so the pelvis does touch the floor, back of the waistline, back of the speedo. Open, wide straddle, find the toes or find the shins, and then find the wide straddle in your legs. Okay, so we're not forcing anything right now. We're just kind of showing ourselves the example of, of representing 
our freedom, right? So justice, of course, right? So we shouldn't be shamed and we shouldn't be blocked from someone that just doesn't understand where we're coming from, especially when it comes from an innocent space, but it doesn't even mean anything, right? So it's just like, it just doesn't matter, right? People need to just stop with their censorship. <laughs> Obviously, I'm stuck on that. Legs straight up to the sky, come up, touch the toes. Come back down to the floor, arms over the head. Heels are right over the hips, come back up, touch the toes. Go back down, arms over head. Come back up, touch the toes. Go back down, knees to bend. All right, arms are over the head. Lift the hips. You get your little bridge pose. And then lower the hips. Settle your energy. It's pretty good. You're gonna drop your knees to the right. Arms are still over the head. Inhale through center. Knees are to the left. Okay, let that sort of quiet space be felt, right? Knees through center. Hug them to your chest. Press them out so you get that nice little sort of core challenge to bring you up to staff pose, up to a uh, Paschimottanasana to forward bow over the legs. Okay, inhale up to a flat back. Right, there you are. Cross your legs and come to sit in the pose that gives you your, your feeling of center, of cross, of simple. Right, right, so sit asana is called a perfect pose because you're perfectly in a place where you feel uninhibited, right? Not blocked, not controlled. I think about any of those things, what blocks us either through the self, through exterior, what controls us through the self, through exterior, right? And then any of those places where we do feel one of those things being incongruent with our wishes or our dreams or personal opposition, what provokes us, right, where freedom lies, and then what comes out of being blocked, right, so it's not supposed to just push us further down, it's actually meant to promote us higher, brighter, above. Okay, let your hands come together in your heart. Bow sweetly, gently, softly to yourself. Namaste. Oof. Thanks for the patience. Thanks for the presence. Thanks for the peace. Whatever, we're gonna find a way through this, around this, above it, and um, beyond, right? So have no fear. Instagram is not the only place that we can be together, right? Stay cute, talk soon. Happy holidays.